What's up YouTube, Saf here on Super Saf TV. And in this video, I'm gonna be comparing the specs of the Nikon D5200 to the Canon 650D or Rebel T4i, depending on where you're from. Now I've posted a full hands-on review of the Nikon D5200 and you can check that out right here. And one of the most asked questions I've had on there is how does the D5200 compare to the Canon 650D? Um, I've had a play around with the 650D, but I've not had it long enough to give you guys a full hands-on review, but I thought if I do a spec comparison that will be useful to lots of people out there and you can also see some key differences between these two cameras. Initially looking at the sensor size and resolution the D5200 has a 24.1 megapixel CMOS sensor, the 650D an 18 megapixel CMOS sensor now. So obviously you've got a much larger resolution with the D5200. Both are crop sensors, not full frame, but you've obviously got a much much higher resolution on the D5200. And it's also got a larger sensor size, so not only will it give you a larger resolution, but it also mean less noise in low light as well. So that's a key advantage there of the Nikon D5200. In terms of autofocus, the D5200 has a 39-point AF system with nine cross-type sensors, the 650D 9-point AF system with all nine cross-types. So now obviously the D5200, many more autofocus points there, so that's gonna be really useful. And um, I don't know, Canon seem to be a bit stingy with uh, the autofocus points, really. I mean, even the 6D, which is a full frame, that only has about nine or 11, I think it is. But um, Nikon obviously very generous with their autofocus points, and it's very, very useful. The more autofocus points, you have the more useful it is to really get into those uh, get some tight focus on uh, different areas so really useful there in terms of ISO the D5200 has ISO range between 100 to 6400 extendable to 25,600 the 650D has the ISO from 100 to 12,800 extendable also to 25,600 now um, obviously the Canon 650D has a higher ISO range however um, personally, I would not advise going any more than 6400, especially on a on a on a uh, crop sensor, because you know you're gonna get lots of noise. Uh, anything above that, personally, so I would not advise that. And if you want to see some examples of the D5200, how that performs in low light situations, uh, I've got the in the in the review video. You've got plenty plenty of examples on there at different shot at different ISO, so you can check that out. The D5200 does not have a built-in focus motor. The 650D does have a built-in focus motor. Now, for those of you who don't know what that is, um, not all lenses, some of the older lenses don't come with a focus motor on there. So if you've got an old lens and you use it with the D5200, you may not be able to use the autofocus. Uh, so um, it is useful to have that built-in. Not a huge deal because most of the new lenses do have that built-in, so you don't have to worry about it too much. But if you're getting the D5200, you're going to be getting a lens just do make sure about that but as I said you don't have to worry about it generally because most of the new lenses do have that built in. Um, there's quite a few similarities between uh, these two cameras as well I mean continue shooting both have five frames a second you've also got an SD card slot a single SD card slot on uh, both cameras uh, pop-up flash and a max shutter speed of one four thousandth of a second. Um, some more differences come when we look at the screen. Obviously, both have a three inch screen, which is a, a flip out screen, so you can uh, tilt and shift it. So it's really, really uh, useful to get some awkward angles and everything. However, the D5200 has a 921K dot very angle screen, whereas the 650D has a 1040K dot very angle screen. So obviously, you're gonna have a high resolution in terms of the screen on the back, but the key thing, now a key selling point on the 650D is obviously the touch screen functionality. One of the first, if not the first, DSLR with a touchscreen. Very, very useful. Now, I've tried this myself. It's really useful to you know change options and things uh, using that touchscreen. And one of the other key um, advantages is when you, uh, focusing in when you're in live view, you can uh, touch different areas of the screen to sort of uh, you know focus in on different areas, which is really useful. Similar to mobile phones, which um, you'll see from the example, and it works okay. It's not uh, again, it's not brilliant. It's not the best, but it's really really good. And I want to see touch screens on newer DSLRs uh, that come out. I'd, definitely think it's a very very useful feature and it's something to really really you know go forward and it's to bring to the DSLR market. 
here. In terms of video, the D5200 1080p at 24, 25, and 30 frames a second, but you've also got 1080i interlace at 50 and 60 frames a second. Key advantage there. At 720p, you've got 50 and 60 frames a second. The 650D, 24, 25, and 30 frames a second at 1080p, and at 720p, 50 and 60 frames a second. So obviously the key advantage here you've got on the D5200, the first Nikon uh, DSLR with uh, this frame rate um, at uh, 1080i. So obviously it's interlace, not progressive, so it's not gonna be as good as progressive. I've tried it, it's not too bad uh, personally, but you do get a bit of a crop in. So you've got that advantage there if it's uh, useful for you. And uh, in terms of max recording length in video, the D5200 is going to give you 20 minutes, whereas the 650D is going to give you 29 minutes and 59 seconds. So you're going to get a third more recording length, continuous recording length on the 650D. Very, very useful there as well. So the 650D has an advantage there. In terms of mic input, both have a mic input socket and they both have uh, stereo mics on board as well. Um, I, my personal experience on the Nikon D5200, plugging in a Rode mic, you get a lot of hiss in the background. Again, you can check that out on the review. I'm not sure why that this is, and I've not found a perfect solution for this either, um, but that's one of the issues on there, but I'm not sure about other, other mics, they, they might work fine. Uh, wireless transfer, the D5200, if you buy the wireless mobile adapter, the W1A, you can see an unboxing of it here. If you use that, you can wirelessly transfer images from the camera to a mobile phone or a tablet, and you've also got some remote controls from a mobile phone or tablet onto the camera so that's a really really useful feature and it's also you know if, you, if you're out on a shoot or something and you want to get images out quick you can get them onto your phone and send them straight away really really useful um the 650d does not have any wireless transfer options so obviously that's a disadvantage there of the 650d to the d5200 now in terms of weight the d5200 is 505 grams the 650d 575 grams now this is the body only so obviously the d5200 nikon d5200 slightly lighter in the hand as well um finally the price now for the body only the d5200 currently between 600 to 650 pounds or around about 800 dollars in the us and the 650d on the other hand is between 500 to 550 pounds and that's around about 650 dollars so obviously you're going to be saving a bit of money if you go for the 650d to summarize i think both are great dslrs and i think it really comes down to what's more important to you do you think the high resolution additional AF points and the wireless transfer option of the D5200 are worth the extra money? Or do you think the touchscreen and the lower price um, of the 650D appeals more to you? And obviously there's the never ending debate of Nikon versus Canon. You know, I think it comes down to what you prefer. Um, but what are your views on these two cameras? Which one would you go for? Do drop me a comment below and let me know. I hope you found this video useful and enjoyed it. If you did, please, please do hit that thumbs up button. It really does help me out. And why not subscribe to this channel? I've got plenty more videos coming up on here. Thanks for watching once again. This is Saf on Super Saf TV, and I'll see you next time.